Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting piano in the park and I'm sipping on some cherry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks so let's get painting and let's get sipping all right so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas if you're painting along you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using I'm going to be using acrylic paint today my colors are titanium white burnt sienna which sometimes I call rust burnt umber which I always call brown <laughs> Mars black magenta cobalt blue deep yellow and green oxide and of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like but that's what I'll be using for my tools today I have a white piece of chalk that I'm going to be using for some drawing and then I have three brushes from my personal brush line which is Michelle the painter brushes I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush and then I have a number six and a number two round synthetic brushes and I may refer to these as small medium and large as we go through the painting process or I'll just call them out by name and of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to if you're painting along with me you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes <laughs> and down below this video in the video description I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process one of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the first step is we're going to be painting the sky and the first layer to the ground. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are blue, white, yellow, green, and brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my sky with a nice light blue color. And then on my ground, I'm going to I'm going to paint my base coat using yellow and white. I mean, excuse me, yellow and green up at the top and then green in the middle. And then I'll put a little bit of green and brown down at the bottom so we can have it coming towards the viewer. So I'm going to first uh, pre-mix myself a light blue color for my sky, which I will pre-mix that with my large bristle brush because I'm going to just be using that for the, for the process. So I have already um, pre-mixed my light blue here. How I achieve this is a whole bunch of white and just a teeny touch of my cobalt blue. And I'm just getting this really soft baby blue color that I'm going to, so very, very light in tonal value. I'm going to use this as my base coat for my sky. So I'm going to bring my sky up almost halfway down my canvas. So if this is about halfway, I'm going to come up maybe about an inch or two. And then I can use my brush as a measuring tool to see how far down I did that one. I can come over to the other side and give myself a marker at about the same place. It doesn't have to be perfect just something that'll kind of stop you from going too far down the canvas. And then I'm just using that light blue to create a full coat on my sky. I'm not even really concerned about any gradients or anything like that in my sky right now because it's gonna be really filled with blossoming trees and a, and a sunshiny sunburst, so just getting this light blue on here is going to provide us enough atmospheric dimension behind all of those um, blossoming trees and the sun to make it look believable. So I am just allowing for myself to be very free and just 
painted it on here, no need to be perfect. Once I get it on, I just go back and forth, left to right to level it out. And then I'm gonna start transitioning into my ground. I don't even need to wash my brush. I'm just gonna um, first pick up a little bit of yellow on my brush. And this is gonna be where the, um, where the sky is gonna just transition into the ground. So I'm even painting them into each other. So just allowing for a light blend to happen in through there. Again, I didn't wash my brush, so this is gonna have some of this yellow will turn into a little bit of a greenish tone, which is great because we're in the grassy land right now. <laughs> so once I've got that, now I can start just picking up some green paint and I'm gonna be allowing myself to apply the green for the majority of the um, of the ground. And I'm just using this left to right brush stroke for now because I don't really need much texture at the moment in my um, ground. When I go for future steps, I will be um, allowing myself to use a more def definitive and purposeful brush stroke to get the um, appearance of grass blades and stuff like that. But right now, especially up at the top of the um, grass, I'm just kind of, or the land, I'm just kind of going left to right. You could, as you get, work your way down the grass, if you, if you felt that you were nervous about the brush strokes, you could certainly start dabbing it like this, and that'll give you some, um, some good texture to start with, but I think I'm just going to go left to right, so that way it's going to force me to put lots of detail on top of it to, um, to diminish any uh, streaking that is happening right now. And again, I'm just kind of going back and forth, left to right, allowing myself to have this just soft colored background. Now I'm almost down at the bottom, I'm going to start picking up brown. So this brown is going to provide a, a deep, um, darker tone to the this for to the foreground um, details that we're going to be putting in later. So it'll pull the 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 information closer to the viewer with these with this little bit of darkness inside um, those details that we'll be putting later. So this is where I'm going for now. I am going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the background forest. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are magenta, brown, burnt sienna, yellow, and white. I think that's all the colors I'm gonna use. If I need or want to use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it'll be much easier to paint on it that way. Um, I am going to be creating a sunburst later. This is just what we're doing now is just the background out of focus forest so we can have some nice depth to our landscape. So I'm gonna be doing some um, impressionistic kind of tree trunks and branches and then we're going to be um, kind of softening out some out of focus blossoming tree leaves or flowers. <laughs> it, so we'll do maybe uh, some tree trunks and branches and then some blossoms and then more tree trunks and branches on top of it. I really want it to be super soft so I'm going to be using um, some white along with it but what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna put a tiny bit of brown, burnt sienna, and a tiny bit of white, just on the tip of my brush. So I have all three of those colors on the tip of my brush. And to ensure that I don't have a lot, I can just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel. And then once I've got um, what I want on there, I can just sit here and do um, these vertical, I'm using the long side of my brush, these faint vertical, impressions of some branches and some trunks. If you feel that it's too dark or you want to mute it, you can add a little bit of white to your brush. You could also add some of your light blue if you felt that you wanted it to be even more subtle. So if I want 
which I didn't say I was going to use, but I'm using. <laughs> if you want it to be even more subtle, you can just kind of put a little bit of the light blue on your brush, more white, whatever you want to um, allow yourself to have it very, very subtle. And messy. <laughs> messy is a good, a good um, thing to do also because it's just going to make it look nice and out of focus. So just really soft allowing these colors, you can even push it into that uh, grassy area. And then once you've got that on there, now I'm gonna start doing the same thing with some leaves on the trees. So my leaves are gonna be pink and peach and white and maybe a little purple. So that's where the um, you could use a little bit of your magenta with some of your light blue or even your cobalt blue, which I'm not sure if I said I was going to use, <laughs> but those colors would give you a, a purpley tone. I want it to be really soft and light, so I'm going to be using more of just my magenta and white, but you see because I did have a little bit of that blue on my brush, I've got some purpley tones coming in. I'm just using a circular type of brush stroke in order to make this really soft and out of focus. Um, picking up a little bit more. Oops, that was burnt sienna. Hold on. I don't know how that, I must not have been looking at my palette. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let's get rid of that big burnt sienna spot off my canvas. Um, so more white um, and the magenta is going to give you this really nice soft pink appearance. Uh, leaving little peekaboo spots of the sky behind it. If you want it to have some peachy type of tones, you can certainly pick up a tiny bit of uh, yellow, magenta, and white. The yellow is going to allow it to be more of a peachy type of a tone. Just get this on my brush so you can see what I'm talking about, so you can have more peachy type of appearance, especially in this area on the left where, we, where we're going to be by that um, sun if you want to start with those little um, lighter peachy kind of yellowy tones you can certainly do that and you can see I'm just really leaving it super out of focus allowing for these pink um, soft tones to happen and then we're gonna have lots of other trees on top of it if you felt that you wanted to add more tree trunks you could always go burnt sienna yellow and a little bit of white on your brush and you can pull some um, little tree trunks and branches in front if you wanted to. Not necessary, but that'll be um, something if you feel that you want to add even more um, to that background area, you certainly could. And then once you feel that you've got this as um, you know detailed or soft as you want it to be, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the grass. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, green, brown, and I'm going to use some cobalt blue as well so we can really get some nice summery, springy colors in through here. So my light source is going to be over here on the left. So I'm going to have this really big sun-drenched area in through here that's going to be on the other side of my piano. So I'm going to be using a lot of white, green, and a little bit of yellow all throughout this midsection in through here. And then on the exterior areas and down below, that's where I'm going to get it to go a little bit darker with my green, my brown, and maybe even some of my cobalt blue. We're going to be adding lots of flowers and uh, a shadow underneath our piano, little details around our foreground trees later. This is just to get our grass in place um, and make sure that we have the texture that we want. So this is where I'm going to be using um, purposeful directional brush strokes. So I'm going to be stippling up at the top. As I come down, I'm going to be um, pulling up my brush in order to get the grass to go longer and longer as it comes towards the viewer. So I'm going to start with white and yellow, just a little bit of yellow, but a good amount of white on my brush. This is going to be my lightest area. This is going to be where I'm going to be tapping. So I am stippling this light color in this area in through. You can even get it to almost disappear right into that sky. That's going to make it look like it's really just going far off into the distance. And I am allowing myself to just stipple this out 
into um, the neighboring areas. So it's going to provide me with these little pops of highlights on top of and intermingling with the tones that we already put underneath it. So once I've got this big bright area in through here, now I can start introducing more yellows and greens. So without washing my brush, I picked up a little bit of yellow and I'm overlapping this into what was a green section. So you're gonna be able to see some of those green tones that I had put on that first layer and that's what's going to give us the dimension within the grass. If I just used one solid layer of one color, you wouldn't get that dimensional effect that, um, that I'm going for. This is gonna allow it to look like it's got some, some texture to it. So once I've got that, that's looking pretty good. Maybe just pull this out just a little bit more. I'm gonna start picking up yellow, green, and just a touch of white like just a little tiny touch of white because I want it to I want it to be um, lighter than that base and I don't want it to um, become a solid color so that's why I'm using these three colors at the same time and I want this center to have that lightness to it like it's still being um, kissed by that by the sun that's coming into the forest so that's why I'm continu continuing to use white with these three colors and as I'm getting down about halfway into my land this is where I'm gonna start kind of um, almost I kind of push and pull up and this is gonna start lengthening the grass so I'm almost jabbing it into the canvas and I'll do it in a spot where you, where it's not gonna, um, where you can see the texture on, as opposed to me doing right there. So you can see it better in through there. And I'm gonna just kind of keep this brush stroke going for a little while until I get down into um, this bottom area where I will be doing it even, I'll be pulling my brush up even higher. So as I'm going through here, I am trying to concentrate on making sure I get a second coat on the entire um, surface. So if I, I mean, you can have little peekaboo spots of the green showing, but um, I want to just make sure that my, th those scratchy marks from that first layer that I've disguised them so um, the viewer doesn't see them. So even if you put, pick up more green oxide on its own, you can certainly use that to um, help disguise any unwanted um, brush marks from that first layer. If you had done a stippling um, effect on the first layer, you wouldn't be um, dealing with this kind of challenge. But if um, you had gone left to right, you might have those marks that I do, which is um, the brush stroke marks. And by just making sure that you put a second coat on the whole thing, that is going to eliminate those unwanted marks. But um, that first coat with that solid um, color was really important to provide us the depth within the um, grass as we're building it. And you can see right now I'm picking up some more green and yellow and I'm, again, doing my brush in an upward motion. You can see how it's getting darker and darker as it comes down and through here. I'm gonna start picking up just green right now and in a second, and I haven't washed my brush either. In a minute, I will start picking up maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit brown, maybe a little bit of my, my um, cobalt blue to give myself a little bit more depth um, down at the, these bottom areas. And again, I'm just kind of going in an upward direction, I'm going to definitely be adding additional little um, bits of information in the grass as I build my flowers later. But again, this is just providing us with that initial um, layer of grass. So now that I'm down in through here, I can start picking up a little bit of brown with my green. And this is going to give me, again, some more um, additional depth and texture as it's coming down that canvas. So I am pulling my brush up a little bit more. You, when you lay the green on top of the brown, you can see here how I'm laying the green on top of the brown. It's going to um, show more texture. If I just lay brown on top of brown, you're not really gonna see that texture. So that's where these, um, that's where these layers of different colors and different values 
benefits you when it comes to creating texture. Just like when you're creating um, fur or hair, you, you're not really going to get great texture, the appearance of good texture, unless you have different colors laying on top of each other. So right now I just am alternating back and forth between um, the brown and the green and it's providing me with this really great textural effect down at the bottom. So a little bit more green on my brush and again just kind of bringing my brush in an upward motion. Maybe by just alternating I just picked up a little bit of brown and again just you can even lay it on pretty heavy too because we're going to have lots of flowers and stuff later so whatever is visually appealing to you and if you're feeling like you want to push it even a little bit further with this um, with the drama to it you can pick up a tiny bit of your cobalt blue and you can even add that into these outer areas because the brown and the blue is going to make a really nice deep dark tone that's going to it even give you even more of that um, of that kind of encapsulated atmosphere and pull that viewer's attention right towards the center of the canvas. So that's gonna that I, I'm digging at having this blue in here. You can if you don't like it, you don't have to put it. It's just something I thought would look really nice. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using our. I think I want to use the number six round brush for the next step. So you can put this brush away, fiddle with this as much as you want. Just make sure you got a good layer of grass on here. Um, and then you can wash this brush, take out the six round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the foreground tree trunks and branches. I'm going to be using my number six round. The colors I'm using are black, brown, burnt sienna, yellow, and white. And I'm not going to have too many. I might have two on this side and one or two on that right hand side. I just want these foreground trees to kind of anchor um, the paintings because I know my piano is going to be nice and dark. Um, so I don't want it to feel all alone and be unbalanced. So I'm going to be putting some dark trees over on the sides and they're in the forest. So, you know, they can be darker. So I'm going to have my light sources here. So on these trees, the light side of the tree is going to be towards that light source. I'm going to start with black and brown to put in the dark sides of my trees. And then I'll be using burnt sienna, yellow and white to put the light side of the trees on. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm going to start with what's going to be my darkest tree over here on the right hand side. So I am not concerned about um, these trees being perfect and stealing the show, the visual show. I just am really looking for them to, um, again, uh, just anchor and balance my painting. So that's going to be the dark side with my black and my brown. <clears throat> Excuse me, now I can start picking up some burnt sienna and going to the left side of my tree. And I'm just using a vertical brush stroke, allowing for some texture to appear in the tree. If you want a branch or two, you can certainly kind of bring out um, as many branches <laughs> as you want. I did not wash my brush, so I have still a little bit of black and brown on my brush. So this is going to allow me to have, again, those textural effects just naturally create themselves within um, this particular object. If you want these to um, look lighter and brighter, which I'm going to make mine look a little bit lighter and brighter in a minute. Um, but I'm going to let this sit for a minute while I go and put my other trees in place. And then I'll come back and add a little last um, touch to this. I am going to have some heavier tree um, branches and not branches, <laughs> uh, leaves and flowers and stuff, blossoming flowers on top. So that's going to, um, and that'll kind of close off that top. Over on this left hand side, again, I'm just picking up some black and brown. I'm going to have a little tree over here on the left hand side. Probably going to hit, I'm going to have two trees over here. I think I'm going to tackle them both at the same time so I can do the dark sides of them 
and then um, do the light side. So this will be the left side to my right tree. <laughs> and these ones can be lighter because they are closer to the light source. So once I get that on there, I'm going to just start picking up some burnt sienna to blend into that brown. And again, I'm just moving my way towards the right hand side of the tree. This one's going to be a little bit more slender. And again, you can have as many branches as you want. I know that my branches are going to be pretty much hidden. The top branches anyways will be hidden by my um, my blossoms that I'm going to be putting on in a few minutes. But this will, um, if you want little peekaboo spots of the branches, you can totally do that. So down where it hits the ground, I don't know, I didn't mention it on the other tree I was doing, but I'm leaving it really messy going into that grass. Um, so this way, when I do my flowers and stuff, I can just add little sprigs of um, grass right at the bottom of those trees so that'll that'll close that off. I'm going to pick up some um, yellow now on these two left um, trees without washing my brush and I'll put a little bit because they're closer to that sun so I feel like they're going to be a little bit more golden in tone than the um, one on that right hand side. So just add a little bit of yellow into this um, bark area and then I will um, go to the other tree while well, this is drying because I feel like that's looking pretty good. Let me just add a little bit more burnt sienna over here that looks a little unfinished. There we go. Um, while these are kind of settling for a minute, I'm going to go back over to that right tree. I'm actually going to wash and dry my brush because I feel like I do have a little bit too much black still on it and I want to add that highlight to the left hand side of the tree. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm going to pick up yellow, burnt sienna, and white a little bit all, of all three colors on my brush at the same time. This is going to help me add, well maybe more white than that. We need it light enough so it will actually be lighter than what I've done. Um, this is going to add that light, um, vibrant highlight from, from, the, from the light source, from that sun. So I'm just going to add this over here on the left hand side. And you can go as light as you want um, or as yellow as you want. I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going white per se, but definitely you can, you know, add that vibrancy to it. And if you feel like you're light enough, you're, you're light enough with it, but it's not um, contrasting enough, you can always pick up a little bit more black and brown and deepen that right hand side. So the darker the right hand side is, the lighter the left hand side will look. So if you feel as though you want to push it even further and it's not totally black on that right hand side you can just keep adding a little bit of black to it and if you want any other um, uh, like faint kind of foreground trees I'm going to wash my brush you can always add maybe a little bit of brown burnt sienna yellow and white maybe with a little bit of water and let's say I wanted one here but I didn't want it as light as those background ones or as dark as that foreground one I can just kind of add a mid-range one somewhere in through here so and again you can really make them wherever you want them to be that's going to be totally up to you have as many as you want it's your forest um, over here on the left hand side I do want to lighten up the the right side of these trees so I just picked up yellow and white to lighten up the right hand side of these trees which is the side towards the sun and again we're going to have a whole bunch of um, blossoming flowers and stuff that will enhance these as we go through the process but I'm thinking a little bit of yellow and white on the left side of this tree I'm thinking that that is looking pretty good so once you've got this done let's see what are we going to do for the next step I think I want to put the um, the light source in so we're going to be using our large bristle brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want and then you can put this brush away. Take out the large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step, I was thinking I wanted to do the sun, but I've changed my mind. I want to do, I want to finish the leaves on the trees. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are magenta, blue, white, and yellow. And if I go into any other colors, I'll let you know. I'm not sure I'm going to, though. Um, what I want to do, it's, this is going to be, again, pretty subtle, but I want to have some kind of deep, um, 
darker blossoms oh, again around the edges just to kind of anchor it and then just light and fluffy in the middle <laughs> fluffy so i'm going to start with a little bit of um, magenta and blue on my brush probably more magenta than blue so this is going to turn into like a purpley type of a mixture I'm going to be just dotting so this is going to be a, like a stippling type of effect in order to get the the deeper kind of darker um, tones of these blossoms into um, into their starting position <laughs> so just little little bits I don't need a, I don't need big areas um, and I'm just kind of tapping my brush in order to um, get these to create so you can see that there's some magenta and some purple in there just because I'm using them both on my brush at the same time so that looks pretty good I, again I don't need to go too much with this and then once I've done that now I can start picking up a little bit of magenta and maybe a touch of yellow and white on my dirty brush. So magenta, yellow, and white on my dirty brush, and this is gonna start adding another little layer to these blossoms. I'm hardly touching my canvas. So because I'm hardly touching my canvas, it's allowing for a lot of little kind of speckly marks to be created. It's gonna allow me to um, really, in a, in a carefree and kind of simplistic way, develop these um, these blossoms without um, without having to do too much work to them. So I wanted them to look like they're a little bit closer than those background ones. So that's why I'm making the colors a little bit more richer in tone, um, not using as much white. I am going to pick up the white in a minute, but this is again just kind of getting my process started. And then once I've got that on there that's looking pretty good if i felt that i wanted the hint of more in the background like i feel like i do a little bit i'm just adding a little bit more white to my brush so i can get uh just a little bit deeper of um some of these background ones if i again i had kind of a mid mid um uh depth tree in through here so that would make sense if i added a little bit of a you know a mid-depth tone of these um, of these flower blossoms and then I can again if you want to just kind of feather them out that's totally fine so now I feel like I want to get the blue or the purple off of my brush so I'm gonna wash my brush because I still had some of that cobalt blue intermingling I really want it to just kind of soften its way to that to the highlight so I'm gonna pick up um, just a little bit of my magenta and white. So magenta and white are on my brush, maybe a little bit more white than that. And then this is going to give me those really just super soft, pastel -y pink type of tones. Um, and if you run into any wet blue, like I just did on my brush, it's all right. Just, just you know, work work through it. No worries. And again, we're gonna have um, the light source is gonna come into play in a minute. But I'm just kind of adding some nice, pretty light ones. Maybe a little bit more on that left hand side, and just dotting it. Just know that this is just all about having fun. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine. Just enjoy the process, make it into whatever you feel it can be. And then once you've got it all set, I'm just gonna kind of maybe pull a couple of these tones a little bit farther down in through here. Once you feel that you've got it as um, bright as springy as you want it to be, we are gonna use the same brush for the next step. I feel like I want a little bit more of that magenta in through here, so I just put a little bit more on my brush. Um, so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the sun. I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, and magenta, and maybe a little burnt sienna. Um, but I will call out the colors as I use them. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using very little bit of paint on my brush. I'm gonna have my light source right in through here. So that's gonna be my brightest, whitest area. And then I will be pulling out beams of light that are gonna just be drenching the whole scene. So I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of white on my brush. 
And when I say tiny bit, I mean tiny bit. <laughs> and I'm going to decide where I want my brightest spot to go. So that's going to be in through here. So I'm really just kind of establishing this lighter area. I will most likely put more layers on that one area in order to get it as vibrant as I want. But to start, I just kind of put that on there. And then I'm going to put a little bit more white on my brush and I'm going to start pulling out from where my light source is, I'm going to start pulling out these beams of light. So you could, if you're nervous about um, doing this kind of pulling the paint, you could certainly use a little bit of water or a little bit of liquid medium on your brush. That's going to allow you to um, pull and um, brush that on in a in a thin kind of um, looser sense um, where the where the paint will pull farther. I just put a little bit of water on my brush so you can see what I'm what I'm talking about. So if I'm if I've got a little water on my brush, it's going to allow me to pull that really far. So I can even hit that other tree if I want to. And it's going to keep it transparent or translucent so it looks like it's a beam of light that is just illuminating whatever is underneath it. So that's probably the safest way to start, um, especially if you haven't done this type of process before. Um, that way you can, you can get your your brush to go far. The only trouble with that is if you have too much water on your brush and you want to keep painting over the same spot, you're just going to keep lifting the paint off of the canvas. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using water on your brush, say, where you want the brightest sun because that's going to um, make your paint transparent where you can't see through it. Um, and then you won't be able to get that sun part as bright as you want. But you can pull these beams even in front of the tree in through here. So again, this right now, I'm just using white to establish these light beams. Um, I could go way more um, dominant than that. So I'm just putting a little bit more white on my brush to get these to go a little bit brighter. And you want them to pull out directly from the sun, not from you don't want them all to kind of just go downwards. You've got to pull them out from the center of the sun. That's where they would be coming out from. And you can, again, make them as bright as you want or as faint as you want. Once I've got that established, I'm going to feel the center of my sun that's still not dry, so I'm not going to tackle that with a second coat. But I want a little bit of extra color in the um, beams of light because they can be transparent and they can glow colors of the um, forest. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white plus a tiny bit of yellow and burnt sienna. So white, yellow, and burnt sienna. I'm not going to put it right at the um, tip, tippy part of the um, where the sun is. I'm just going to kind of allow for it to be introduced into these edge parts. That's probably a little bit too much burnt sienna. So I'm going to back the burnt sienna off and pull a little bit of yellow and white so you can kind of see. There we go. That'll, there we go. That makes me happier. And this is going to, again, just add to the colors of the, the glow. It's taking the colors from the forest and just glowing them onto each other. And you can also do it with the um with the magenta too right now i'm just getting a kick out of using the yellow and white so i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep using that for a minute here but that will also make the sun itself look brighter so if i put some um, colors in the beams next to the sun in through here but not directly in that white area that's going to make the white area look even whiter so that's another little trick to just getting that area because you're adding more contrast to the colors around it. So I feel like I want to add a little bit of the magenta. So I'm going to add a touch of magenta plus a little bit of white and whatever was remnants on my brush as well. And you can put it even maybe up in these, um, up where the blossoms are. So again, just pulling these additional colors into the beams of light is going to make it really painterly and also just add some additional depth to to your forest. And then once I've got the beams of light on, I can, oh yeah, I definitely need some lighter ones over here. Um, I will add a little bit more brightness to the center of my, um, yes, 
of my son, but I just am excited about these guys. So we're just going to keep adding. I just picked up a little bit more white. Just add a little bit more lightness to this area in through here. And again, I'm just pulling it out from the center. I'm not adding any more white or water to my brush right now. Just um, allowing for these beams of light to um, be brighter and brighter. I like that. So now I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to add more white into the center of that um, beam of light. And again, this is going to be a personal preference on your part, how dominant you want this light source to be, how much you feel that you want it to cast a glow into your scenery. Um, so I just added more white to that center. I'm just kind of tapping it out so I don't lift that paint off. And then I can just kind of pull out those little beams right along the edge. And again, if you felt you wanted it even brighter, that's when you would just pick up a little bit more yellow as you're going away from it. And that's gonna, away from that center, and that'll make that look brighter. And then just keep fiddling with it. You might find that you wanna do three or four different layers on this in order to get it as bright as you want. You might find that one layer works for you. Whatever you feel is in your wheelhouse to kind of um, bring this into that place, feel free to do so. And then once you've got that done, we are going to be using our um, drawing utensil for the next step. I just feel like I want a little bit more yellow in through here. Um, so you can put this brush away, take out something to draw with, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our piano and its player. <laughs> I'm gonna be using my white piece of chalk. You can, of course, use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers, and by the time we're done, hopefully we'll have something that is in proportion to a grand piano and a person playing it. You can um, create you know, anybody playing it, or maybe you don't wanna put a person on it, or maybe you wanna forego the piano altogether and just have a beautiful, you know, spring forest, whatever you'd like to do. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step as well, because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. So I'm gonna guide you to find yourself the center of the canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, I've already marked mine in through here, so I didn't lose where it was, <laughs> so that's gonna be the center. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the right of that, about an inch, maybe a little bit more than an inch, and give myself my first real marker. Then I'm gonna to go to the left about an inch and a half, somewhere in through here. I might need a regular pencil too, hold on, so you guys can see it better on these light areas. So yeah, that'll be better in the light areas. So that'll be my second marker. What I'm now gonna, I'm gonna give, we're making kind of a, a rectangle, but it's a pers it's a per perspective type of a rectangle because the corner of the piano comes out closer to the viewer than the side edges. So we need the this first corner that I'm going to make for the piano to be far out to the viewer. So from this line in through here, I'm going to go up from it up up from that center point about an inch and a half give myself another marker right in through here, and then down about an inch and a half. So this line that I'm gonna draw right here is a vertical line that's about three inches long. So something like that is gonna give me my first line. I'm gonna then come over to this left marker that I made, and I'm gonna go up about, I would say an inch and a half somewhere in this vicinity. This marker is just a little bit lower than this one. So wherever you have this one to the, the, the height of your center or to the height of the top of your canvas, this is closer or lower than that one, just by maybe about an eighth to a half of an inch. And then come back to here and I'm gonna go down maybe about um, a half of an inch. So this line in through here that I'm drawing is gonna be about two inches versus this one that's three inches. So then I can connect these three markers with a vertical line, like that. And then I'm gonna connect my corners. So from here, I'm gonna have a slightly diagonal line to there, 
and then from here this one's going to look more diagonal like this. So that's going to give me the front section of the piano that's facing the player. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I want to extend this line in through here way far out, but I need to give you a place to, to shoot for. So if I find myself back at the halfway mark, I can kind of go directly to the right until I'm about maybe um, two and a half to three inches away from the edge of my canvas. Let me just make sure that I've got this in the, my brush is almost exactly half the distance. So I'm a little bit higher than the halfway mark to um, this back little corner I'm gonna direct you to. So this is maybe one, two and a half inches from the edge of the canvas. And then the upper mark to this vertical line is about an, an inch 75. So almost two inches, just go vertical from that is gonna give me this marker here. So when you connect this to here, it should be pretty much a continuation of this angle in through here. So if you have a, a, a ruler or something, even your brush can help you just to see if that is pretty um, co connectable. Once you've got that, you can just take these two, these two markers and just kind of connect in through here. These can certainly be off a little bit on their angle, but um, if you can get them pretty much where they can connect, that's great. And then you're going to take from this little guy here and connect these with a vertical line and then these two with a diagonal line. So that just gave us a real basic shape for the outside or for the piano. Now I just need to make some um, little adjusting lines in order to give myself the bottom shape of it. I need some legs on the bottom of my um, of my piano and I need a little bit of form to it. So if I come in from from here, I would say almost like two inches, maybe one, two, in, maybe an inch and a half to two inches, and give myself a um, a vertical line like this. I can drop this down just a little bit, and I'm going to give myself a slight curve right in through here, and then just ride this bottom angle like this into this corner. This is going to give me the shape. There's a there's a round shape to these pianos, so that's going to start that process. And now that I have that, I can put some legs on. So I've got the back leg in through here, which is going to come right in this corner. I can just kind of give myself a little curve and then just bring it down to the ground. I can come out from this back corner here. I can even give myself a little decorative element, just bring it down like this, and then just bring it down in through here. So I've got this leg probably about two, almost three inches tall. Then the front corner leg, I can just bring it somewhere in between these two areas and do a similar kind of um, scalloped or curved edge coming out from the bottom of the piano. And I've got this leg hitting the ground a little bit lower than that back leg. And then I'll do another front leg that's gonna be underneath that left side. We're not gonna see the scalloped part of it. So I can just kind of split the difference in this section, bring myself down a um, vertical line and then go to the left of that about half the distance between here and here, give myself another vertical line coming down. The fourth leg, I can't see. It's directly behind this one, so don't worry about that. The top of the piano, I've got it open. It's a grand piano, so I'm gonna make a mark between these two areas in this first section that we made, so somewhere right in the center there. And then I'm gonna come up if I find myself about halfway between this, these two vertical lines, somewhere in through here, and go straight up until I'm about maybe two inches away from the top of the canvas, give myself a little bit of a marker, then go about two inches to the right, give myself another marker. I'm going to connect these two with a horizontal line, and then I'm going to connect this to here with a diagonal line, like that. Now I've got to put the shapely edge of the um, the piano cover on. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to find myself about the halfway point between these two, give myself another marker. So this should be about directly below that one. And these two, this marker and this marker are going to be 
um, like a scalloped kind of S shape. So I can take from here, I'm going to go diagonal in this direction for maybe about an inch and a half or so. So somewhere like this, and then I bring it, scallop it out like this, and then wrap it around and bring it back to here. And that'll give me that shape. Now I'm going to go to the player of the piano. And on the player, I'm going to start with the bench and put her on top of it. So I'm going to start with a simple rectangle that is a little bit tipped. Um, I'm going to come about halfway down this leg and give myself a vertical line that's maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch tall. I'm going to go to the left of that about an inch and a half to inch and three quarters and go just a smudge lower and give myself another vertical line and then I can connect these two. So the it's going to be just a little bit at the angle. I'm going to now um, give myself the um, another rectangle on this side, on the left hand side. So I'm going to go to the left of this about an inch and a half, maybe inch and three quarters, give myself another vertical line, but it start the bottom of it is at about halfway, oh, maybe, yeah, about halfway up this line, and then the top is a little bit higher. It is a little bit shorter than this line. So if I measure this, it should be a little bit shorter than this one. And then I can connect those two vertical lines. So this gives my bench a little bit of perspective. So it's making it look like it's going farther off um, into the distance. I need to then give myself another horiz or horizontal line that's at a similar angle as this, only shorter. So again, if I can take my fancy measuring tool and say, okay, this one is this long, I can come back to this back corner here and give myself a, a marker that is a little bit shorter and then I can connect those two at a similar angle as this one. This could be easily hidden if you don't get it perfect because she's going to be sitting on it. So, and she's going to have some cloth and all that good stuff. But if you can get a little angle, great. And then I just need some legs on my, this is my bench. So I'm just going to mark some legs. One, two, they're just coming down from the corners. Three. And then this one, I would probably see a little bit of it. I'm going to just put a little vertical line in through there. So you can see how these are a little angled here and then these back ones they can they're going to get hidden by her cloth anyways. So now I need to put her body on. I am going to come directly down from this corner of the piano into I'm going to first make myself a rectangle. So I'm going to just extend this line to the piano bench in through there. I'm going to now come down from this corner, maybe about a, a almost a quarter to a half of an inch, give myself a horizontal line that is about an inch, inch and a half wide, something like that. And then I can just draw a vertical line to get down to the bottom of my, or down to the bench. You don't even have to close off the bottom of this because we're going to put her rear end. So just bring it down to the um, down to the bench. So that gives me her torso. All I need to do now is tell the viewer where her elbows are, where her rear end is, and where her knees are, and her head, and we'll be fine. <laughs> so about halfway up here is where her waist will be. So think of her waist as somewhere in through here. I'm going to round out from her waist her hip rear end area. So I'm just going to do round that out and then just bring it to the edge of the bench like that. About halfway between here and here, I'm going to bring out her knee. So this is going to be like extension from her waist, bring down her knee. Let me get my chalk back in play here. Bring down her knee and then her skirt kind of is going to overlap this leg of the, um, of the piano. I can, if I want to know where the bottom of her skirt is, it's going to be somewhere in through here. Again, the leg of the bench will be in front of it, this one, but the leg of the piano will be behind it. So if that's going to confuse you, just take a little bit of water and erase the piano leg. And that will tell you what's in front of what. Her um, arms and her shoulders, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, take it from this right top corner 
I'm going to give myself a little bit of an arcing line. This is her top of her shoulder neck area. Her elbows are going to come down to where her waist is. So we already decided her waist is here. I'm going to give a little curve for her elbow and then this shoulder can then just come down to the elbow. The right side is going to be playing the piano. We're going to see her, her hand. So her elbow is going to be right at her waist in through here. So now all I need to do is just maybe um, come up and out a little bit with what's going to be her forearm almost to my center um, mark of my um, or like to that where that leg area is of the bench somewhere in through here and this is just going to be her wrist I can pull out this shoulder just a little bit and then just down in through here we're going to just ve do very little um, information on her fingers we're just going to have her wearing like something that's covering her whole wrist area so don't worry about the hand at this point and then for her head she, her head's kind of leaning down looking at the piano so i'm going to give myself an oval type of shape uh, that's maybe about a little bit more than an inch higher than the piano itself and it kind of dips down like this and then into her back like that and that's all I'm going to be doing for the for the outline. You could, you know, um, I guess you could section off her hair if you wanted to, which that's totally up to you at this point. If you do, just maybe erase those um, guidelines, and a, you can erase any other guidelines that might be confusing to you, like the one inside her rear end and through here, um, even this internal rectangle if you felt that that would be a little confusing um you could oops i just dropped my eraser hold on a second you could certainly erase those internal um guidelines if you feel that they're going to confuse you during the painting process um, but that's about as far as i'm going to take it on this step i am going to be using my number six round for the next step so you can just get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting in the base coat of our piano player and the piano and the bench, so our objects. I'm gonna be using my number six round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, and white. So I'm gonna do my um, piano in just black to start. We will add a whole bunch of other details onto it later in order to give it a little bit more of a lifelike um, appearance, but right now I'm just gonna start with um, black paint. I do want some of these edges to be on the cleaner side. I don't always um, have my paintings having clean edges to them because I like my, my painterly style, but sometimes when I'm doing objects such as a piano <laughs> where I feel it would you know, be the most representational if I had pretty clean lines, I, I will go for it um, on something like this. But if I can't get them perfect, I'm okay with that too. I just am trying for some cleaner edges so I can have um, in my head a good representation and the, um, the paint, especially um, when using a little bit of water or some kind of liquid medium on your brush will sink into the little holes in the canvas a little bit better. It will definitely be a little bit more transparent, so you might need more than one layer on it, but it'll give you those nice crisp clean edges. Um, when I get to this guideline from the top from the open section to this part here, I'm going to leave a little bit of the evidence of that um, guideline because that's going to be kind of an integral um, part to the piano when I put those details on there and I'm going to want to really know exactly where that part is. So I'm just going to leave a little evidence of that line in through there so I don't, I mean I can clearly see that it is connected um, on the left side and the right side so I could certainly imagine it if I needed to but um, it'll be easier for me if I just leave it there 
and if you need to leave the evidence of some of your um, guidelines on the exterior so you make sure that you stay painting within your lines the whole time that would that would benefit you i am also going to leave a little bit of this line in through here um especially maybe um the bottom portion of it and uh, i've got this line here that will help i'm I take that back. I'm not going to leave that because I have this this marker here what that will indicate to me where that line is. That's going to be um, providing a... Oh, there's another thing I want to do too. <laughs> I've got lots of thoughts in my head right now. This back corner in through here, I don't want it to be pointy like that. That was just a guide. You're going to erase that um, mark in a minute, but you're going to round this edge with your paint. So I probably could have done that with my... Um, with my drawing but I forgot so we're doing it now <laughs> so you'll erase that that corner later this is gonna give you that iconic um, round shape to to these grand pianos but I needed to give you that corner so you knew where to where to put it and then this bottom edge here you don't need to round out um, but I did do this little decorative element going into the leg so I just oops <laughs> went outside my lines there um, so I'm just following my following my lines now and then when I get to this corner here if you feel that you need to leave that corner you could but you do have the evidence of it right in through here so it's not necessary um, but you'll see I'll, I'll help guide you to it later to, to refine that corner later when we do the details on um, on the piano and again I'm just painting this all in with black now because I do want a black representational piano so that's why I'm starting with black and then I will add all of my shiny reflective um, details on top of it later so just kind of trying to follow my my guidelines where the legs meet the grass don't worry about it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to um, be adding the flowers to um, flowers and little pieces of grass later in order to um, disguise the bottom of that. So again, just kind of following my chalk mark, your um, your legs, your piano. Oh, my, this leg just got bigger. I was just going to say they might get bigger along the way. They might take on a little bit different shape. It's okay. We're going for a nice playful. Um, painting, I again, I'm going for a representational image of a grand piano, but you could, you don't have to bring it into this, you know, the same place I'm bringing it into if you just want it to be looser and more, more impressionistic like we did the background, you can certainly do that. Um, just whatever, whatever works for you. Can put little deer, little bunnies in here. <laughs> I I love doing these forest paintings because I'm always uh, imagining as I'm just doing whatever object I've chosen to put in the forest. I'm really imagining a whole bunch of other little forest woodland creatures in here, or you know, songbirds coming out or sitting on the edge of the piano. You can your imagination can really go wild when you when you start doing um, integrating you know something that is not typically found in a forest <laughs> putting it in the forest and then thinking of what other fun things you can put with it so I'm just going right along her arm right now this is going to be the piano and then um, I've got the piano leg right in through here that I don't want to miss so this is going to be the piano leg it's going to meet her her clothing somewhere in that vicinity and then I have the bench so the bench, I probably do want to keep these edges visible. That'll definitely help when we go to um, paint in the details. So I'm, I'm going to leave the evidence of um, these edges, not necessarily this um, corner, uh, the vertical corner edge, but the horizontal where the top of the bench meets the sides of the bench. Um, that would definitely benefit you to to keep the evidence of that. And if you miss this corner, if you paint over that corner, that's no big deal because we can easily find that. It's just that um, that edge from the top of the seat 
to the um, to the sides of the seat that might get a little difficult to refine um, if it if it disappears. So again, just kind of allowing myself to paint the bench black, bring down these legs. You can have fancy legs. You can have simple legs. Piano benches come in all different styles. They can be very simplistic and they can be very ornate. So wherever you want to bring your your bench into is totally up to you. This leg's gonna grow, I guess, and be a little bit different than this one. It's all right. The front legs can be different than the back legs too. There we go, we're gonna just make our own little style there. And then for her, I'm gonna do um, her hair with burnt sienna is gonna be my base color for her hair. And then her dress, I think I'm gonna just use a combination of my cobalt blue and white. So going into burnt sienna for her hair, I will definitely um, add more dimension to this as I go through the process, but as I brought it over her um, back, I don't know, I didn't say that I did this, so I don't know if you noticed, but her head is here, and then when I hit her shoulder, I bumped it out a little bit. So that's going to um, explain to the viewer that it is laying over her back. The, the contour of her back. So then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And then I think I'm just going to go on my brush at the same time, cobalt blue and white, so I can get some different tones in her dress here. So this is cobalt blue and white at the same time. Um, and it's going to naturally just start me off with a couple of different tones. And if you bump into wet black paint along the way, don't worry about it, because we'll get another step going. Um, I wanted to use two colors on my brush right now so I can start some nice um, fabric um, flow. There's her elbow in through there so I outlined her elbow. I might do her, sh her sleeves a lighter color than the, um, than the blue. I might actually put, give her white sleeves. So um, blue and white Cobalt blue and white is where I'm headed for her dress in through here, as if maybe she's wearing, um, you know, a dress that has um, no sleeves, and then she has a white shirt on underneath. So you could certainly have her wearing whatever you want. I might change that thought, but now that I'm thinking maybe I'll put some of this blue on her on her wrists to color coordinate. <laughs> I got all kinds of ideas in my mind right now. So again, I'm using a directional brush stroke to get her dress on down and through here. It's going to flow into the ground. Um, but again, I don't need it perfect right now. I just want this base coat on here. So I have somewhere to, um, somewhere to jump off of when I go to do all those other little details. So that looks pretty good. And then I need something for her sleeves. So I'm going to wash my brush. I think I'm just going to start with white on her sleeve. So I'm just picking up some white. Give her, we can add some dimension to them later. Just going to start them with white. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using, hmm, I'm going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry. Just get her little, her little sleeve in through here. You can wash and dry this number six brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the second step to the piano and the bench. I'm gonna be using my number six round. The colors I'm gonna use are white, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, uh, black, yellow, green, and that should be it. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm gonna put the keys in place. I'm gonna create the shape of where the top of the piano kind of sits versus the front of the piano. We'll create this cool contour on the side of the piano and we're gonna start the reflection of the surroundings. So it's gonna be a shiny piano, so the underside of the lid is gonna have a reflection, the side is gonna have a reflection, the 
bench is going to reflect. So we'll start that process as well. So what I will first want to do is separate out this right hand side from the front um, and that top area. So I'm going to give you a couple of um, places to make some markers. I'm going to pick up a little bit of cobalt blue plus a teeny tiny touch of white. So it's not as light as my light uh, blue, but it's got cobalt blue plus white in it. So I'm going to find this corner in through here where we made this area. I'm going to give myself a vertical line that's about an inch tall. So just a real narrow line. You don't need to do anything fancy, just a, a pretty narrow line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this curve that we had made in through here. And I'm going to give myself another vertical line that's going to stop, I would say, almost an inch away from the top of the, um, of the piano. I'm going to now connect some marks. So my cobalt blue plus a teeny tiny touch of water. I mean white. <laughs> so I can connect here to here, but I also wanted to connect to back here. So where it starts to curve over here, that's where my line is going to start. I'm going to take it and just kind of um, come around this corner and start to separate it. And then I'm going to come into here when and, and go past. And when I get to about where the leg is, that's when I'm going to start to curve it down and give it the profile, the um, side profile of the piano. So I've got it in through here. I'm going to come over like this, curve it, and come back into here. And then this can be just kind of a 45 degree angle kind of thing in through there. This edge over in through here, you could also curve off a little bit. So you could take your um, cobalt blue and a little bit of white and curve that. It's not necessary, but if you feel that you want those two edges to be pretty similar to one another, you can certainly curve that as well. Something like that. I might actually, I'm going to hit that with a little bit of white too. I'm washing my brush. I actually want to round that out more. So I just put a little bit of white on my brush. Just get that to round out a little bit better. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that back corner back here that we had done earlier. So that doesn't distract me anymore. So just take an eraser, erase that. Now I'm good to go. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to section off um, where the front of the piano is to the inside of the top. So again, I think I'm going to just use, actually, I think this time I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use a little bit of black and white. So I have like a gray on my brush. I'm going to come um, down this corner. I would say about an inch somewhere or half of an inch to an inch somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to give myself a come down here, maybe about a quarter of an inch and then give myself a diagonal line like this. And then I'm going to take this color and I'm going to give myself a, I'm going to ride this edge about a quarter of an inch away. So I'm going to just give myself, I'm going to put a little water on my brush too, so you can see what I'm doing here. And so I can have a nice continual line. I'm going to just take this and I'm doing the same kind of line that I had up there, only about a quarter of an inch away. Like this. And then when I get to this back corner here, I'm going to about half the distance between here and here, I'm going to give it a curve into um, the side of the of that line in through there. So this now becomes the top inside of the piano and this becomes the front. I'm going to pick up some white paint on my brush now with a little bit of water. I didn't wash my brush so it's probably going to be kind of like a grayish color. I'm going to separate out where the keys are going to go. So I'm, they're going to come a, about halfway between this corner and the bottom so I can give myself a little bit of a marker in through there and then they're going to come about halfway between here and where this curve is. So somewhere in through here and then I'm just going to give myself these diagonal lines going off to um, her side. Something like this 
and then this is going to go like this. It's going to go right under her hand like that. Yours might not land exactly where mine does, but that's okay. And then I'm going to paint this whole section in with white paint. So I'm most likely going to have to go around her, her sleeve. So I'm going to just leave a little evidence of her sleeve in through there um, because these are going to be the keys to the piano. They don't have to be super duper white at this point. Uh, that's why I'm using it with a little bit of um, a dirty brush so that way I can build myself to a white highlight later. Um, and I am doing this purposely so I can have some dimension in those keys. And we've got the black keys to go to. So this is again just kind of starting the process um, of where we want them to be. And her hand's going to be on top of this too. So again just kind of coloring in this section with a off-white of sorts kind of color and because I picked up white on my dirty brush that's where the that's why I'm saying it's off-white because it's not totally white <laughs> and then just getting this to go right into where her sleeve is and just gonna blend this out a little bit there we go so that looks good to me so the top the inside is going to be a reflection of everything around here I'm going to be I'm going to wash my brush I'm going to be using green yellow and burnt sienna and maybe a little bit of white but I'm going to start with green and yellow this little section in through here it's just going to be a reflection of the grass the trees mother nature whatever you want it to be and it's I'm putting it on top of the black so it's not going to be super bright bright but I will add some little um, additional highlights later but that starts it I'm gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna yellow maybe a touch of white just so this isn't one solid color here so burnt sienna yellow white just give myself some additional color so again it's not just one solid color and allow yourself the liberty to to make it bright or not whatever again works for you I do have another step that will um, put more detail in this but this again is just kind of telling us where all these sections are and you know that they're reflective and stuff you could even put a little bit of this um, just with your dirty brush pick up a little bit of white put a little shine on this part of the um, front of the piano in through here so just whatever dirty is on your brush just kind of rub it on top of that black and that'll start a little reflection. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of black too just so I can blend it out so it's a little bit smoother of a blend. There we go. And then on the sides of the piano in through here and up here, this is where I want it to really shine and have some brightness to it. So I'm going to be using my cobalt blue and white over here and then I'm going to be using a lot of burnt sienna over here. I just want it to look really shiny that it's reflecting stuff so I'm going to start with um, some cobalt blue and just put it on top of that black. Then I pick up a tiny bit of white over on this right hand side and I'm just blending it in so it takes on the effects of the black as well. And then as I go towards this left, I can just kind of get it to blend out. I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna and get some burnt sienna in through here. So maybe it's reflecting some of the trees or, you know, some of anything. I think trees would make sense to me. And it, maybe it's a little curved because the, the contour of the shape of the piano maybe is taking on a little bit of a contour in the shine. Whenever you have reflections, they're going to take on the contour of that particular object. So that looks nice. And if you feel that you did too much, you can always bring some black back into it. And then on this side over in through here, I, um, I definitely want there to be some cobalt blue with a touch of white. So I'm going to take right in through here, right on my line that I had right here cobalt blue and white and I'm almost just doing a vertical line like that and then you can pick up a little bit of black and just blend it out vertically to the left something like that 
and then do the same thing in this section here. So this is these vertical reflections really help to um, show the contour of an object. So again, I'm mostly cobalt blue with just a teeny tiny touch of white. I'm going to put a big highlight. Oh, let me give you another um, little outline here. Down at this bottom where this kicks out here, I can take this and give it a curve right into here. So that just separated the leg from up here. And then I can take this cobalt blue and white, give myself a section at either the top or the bottom, and then just vertically blend this. So again, that's going to take on, that's going to explain to the viewer the contour of that particular object. I think I want a little bit more of this on the uh, right edge over and through here. And you could do this with other colors. I just know that black, when it's shiny, can take on the reflection of the sky. It can take on the reflection of, you know, anything. So just bringing in those whatever colors you want from nature. We're going to have flowers in here. So maybe later when I'm doing my flowers, I pop in a couple of little reflections of the flowers. So you can really just, you know, have fun with that with those as well. Um, I need something in through here too. So I'm going to go, um, I think I'm going to go cobalt blue, black and white for a little bit of a, um, this area here kind of is going to be, I want it to be more three dimensional. So I'm going to widen this a little bit like this so I can have that edge and I'm going to put some highlights on the legs and in through here. I'll do that in a future step because I feel like I want a little bit smaller of a brush. But in through here, I definitely want something in through here. So I right now I have black, blue, and white on my brush. I think I'm just going to pick up a little bit more black and blue and just um, get it pretty dark but not black. Maybe a couple of little black areas or fade it into the black so that way I've got some uh, at least a second coat making sure that I have um, painted it all the way. And of course you could put other reflections in it as well. But I think that's as far as I'm going to take this step. Um, we are going to be using, um, what do I want to do for the next step? I feel like I want to um, maybe finish this. So I'm going to use my number two or whatever the, the, the round is. I think it's a number. Yeah, the number two round brush for the next step. So once you've got this far, you can certainly fiddle as much as you want. Um, then you can put this brush away, take out the number two round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the piano and the bench. I was gonna do a step on the bench last step, <laughs> I forgot. So we're gonna just finish at this in this uh, step. I'm using my number two round. I'm gonna be using black, white, yellow, green, burnt sienna, and cobalt blue. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I think I'm going to go for the bench first. I really just want to, I, I need some highlights on the top. I need a second layer on the, um, on the black itself and any decorative elements that I feel would benefit me. I will do that. So on the top, I'm just going to use a little bit of, um, I don't want it to blend to get lost in here. She's going to have some drape over her. So I think I'm just going to go for, um, mm, I think I'm just going to go for some white and burnt sienna to give myself this, um, almost like wood texture look in through here. And then just kind of allow myself to um, just have a nice highlight in through here. So burnt sienna and white is going to be my highlight color. Just give myself that edge in through here and maybe in through here. And if you feel that you could get away with a little bit of it on the side, feel free to do so. And then I'm just going to pick up black on my dirty brush to make sure that I have a second coat. The bench is not uber important because it's really um, a lot of it's going to be hidden by her. I'm going to have her have a piece of cloth like ribbon coming from her waist. So that's going to be um, stealing the show on that. But you don't want it to look like you haven't finished an area. So even if a detail like this 
isn't super important for um, making it fancy, you can you still want to finish it. So as I'm going through this, I'm just you know making sure my edges are good, um, and those are those are the attention to detail that I would definitely um, put forth. So even on this little edge, maybe I want a little highlight on this edge with my burnt sienna and white to just kick out and make the edge of the bench a little bit more visible. I could do that on this other little leg because it's close to the light source. So those little details will make it look a little bit more lifelike. And you could always, you know, make this edge as white as you want in order to get it to pop. So moving on to the, um, the piano itself, I think I'm going to hit the top and just maybe work my way down. We've got keys, we've got a, um, a pole, we've got a couple of things that need to be attended to and lots of highlights around the edges. So I'm going to pick up some yellow and white on my brush at the same time. I'm doing a nice highlight down the edge of my um, of the piano in through here. So just yellow and white. This is just going to ride right down the edge. This is going to give me a three-dimensional look to it. So as I'm doing these highlights, I'm, I don't necessarily need them to be the same yellow all the way down. They can be brighter at one spot than another because it's a shiny object. So the shiny object is going to take the highlights a little bit differently based on the angle and uh, other varying factors. So as you're going through it, and if one, because I like to use multiple colors on my brush at the same time, if you're going through it and you're saying, oh, well, my yellow isn't the same there as it is over there, that's fine. That's the, that's the whole purpose, is to have those varying tones. I just picked up a little bit more white on my brush. I want this exterior edge to have a nice highlight. This area right in through here, I'm going to, um, I think I need to uh, put a little bit more finessing in through there. I am going to have, she's going to be having some sheet music on a little stand in through here, but I definitely want to make sure that that looks kind of finished. So I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna yellow and white, burnt sienna yellow and white, and kind of give myself an, ed, an interior edge to the, um, or interior color in through here, as if this is reflecting whatever that is. So just understanding that all of these pieces, again, can be reflecting something, um, you can use that knowledge to increase the detail of the object. Now I can pick up some black and just kind of close off this, um, this line where I had left my guideline visible so I didn't lose that spot. So something like that will help me out. If I need to do anything else in through there, I certainly can, but I think that that looks pretty good. I need a little bit more black right in through here. So uh, on this inside part, I don't really need to do a ton, but if I wanted to make it a little bit more vibrant, I could certainly pick up maybe a little bit more yellow, white, and green, and maybe just add another layer in order to make sure that it just looks fully painted. I don't think I really need to do much because my sheet music is going to be... Um, having its own kind of effect. Um, I do want to add a little bit more of a lip in through here, so I'm picking up a little bit more white on my dirty brush and just kind of allowing for this to have kind of a top edge to it in through here. So I'm going to take, um, so I just picked up white on my dirty brush and I'm going to just allow this top edge to be more visible. So that way, um, and then it kind of curves around in through here and then back over here and that will help to separate pieces of um, the piano from one another as well if you can add those little highlights. I feel like there should be some kind of dark um, thing where the where the lid goes so I feel like I need to uh, bring some black back um, somewhere in through here to here I feel as though there should be some kind of um, place for the lid to lay. So I'm going to put this in through here. I could be wrong, but we're just going to put it 
to make my painterly eye <laughs> happy. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue and white just to lighten up this corner so we see that. And a little bit more white in order to maybe um, add a little bit more shine right in through on this corner here. That looks good. So now I'm going to put um, the, oh, let me, let me um, put the second layer to the keys on and while they're drying I can do the the pay the um the musical notes so my white I'm gonna uh, wash my brush and pick up some white so this time it's gonna be bright white and I'm gonna come up from here just a little bit so this is gonna give me the bright white to the keys and then I can even um, go in a diagonal way if I wanted to and that will give me little um, marks between the keys. We still have the black keys to go to. I'll do those in a second. I can now, um, if I want any reflection on here, if I, I, I could pick up any color, I think I'm going to pick up um, white, yellow, and burnt sienna and just maybe increase that a little bit. So I feel like I just want that a little bit lighter, like it's shining from the sun. So while that's drying, I'm going to go and put some notes on. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and white. I don't think I said I was using brown, but I am brown and white. I'm going to put a couple of sheets of music, uh, just maybe somewhere in through here. We're going to have them resting, I would say, in through here. And of course, your sheets of music can look way different than mine. You can have yours in as fancy of a way as you want. I'm just gonna put um, this brown and white. I'm gonna put two pieces next to each other. And then I'll put them at different heights so they look a little bit different from one another. And I'm using brown and white so again, it doesn't go too, too white on me. And then I will um, make some little highlights to them in a minute. Um, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to add some little um, shine with some uh, brown and white, just a couple of little shiny edges to the top of the p the edge of the piano, right in through here. And of course, I could I could use straight white, I could use yellow and white, I could use burnt sienna, whatever you want to add that little that little decorative shine at the top. Of the piano. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to put some black paint on my brush to get some black keys on the piano. So I'm just going to um, do this very loosely with um, some diagonal lines. I do not want to get lost in the details of this, so I'm just going to make them about um, half the distance. I know I am not doing them um, in the correct spacing because there's it's like two and then three and then two and then three I'm just really having fun doing this so my keys are not perfectly spaced so you can make yours perfectly spaced if you want I'm going to opt not to and I'm just going to make sure that I've got them kind of close enough together so hopefully it will appear as though they're pretty they're pretty good <laughs> like that and then I um, definitely want to put a little bit more of a shadowy kind of edge underneath. I just picked up a little bit of, um, actually I'm going to go a little bit of black and white just underneath the edge of the um, white key, so something like this. That'll help to get that a little bit more recognizable as the edge of them. Oh, that looks good. And then I'm going to put something around my, my, I need something to hold up my music. So I'm just picking up a little bit of black so I can have, uh, oops, I just switched that, a little bit of black to maybe there's a little music holder to make sure the, these don't fly away in the wind. A little sheet music holder like that. You could even, you know, put some little notes on it if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to wash my brush, pick up some white, add a little highlight to the, to the top of my sheet music. So it'll look like it is white music. There we go. And then I think I just need to add a couple little highlights down the left side of these legs. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of cobalt blue and white. Um, 
I'm probably going to use a little bit of green too. So cobalt blue and white down the left side of these legs. Hmm, that's too light there. So I'm going to pick up some um, green, yellow, and white. Give myself this highlight. Again, it's shiny. It's reflecting whatever's around it. So green, yellow, and white. We're in the grass. Green, yellow, and white down this left-hand side. But again, I wanted to, you to be able to see that it's the edge. So you might need to leave a little black edge um, next to it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna on my dirty brush to give myself this one in through here. And of course, you can, you know, I, I want to put a little bit more highlight here. So burnt sienna was where I had that highlight. So burnt sienna yellow and white is going on my brush right now. This is a little bit darker than I wanted. So I'm going to just add a little bit of extra lightness in it. Burnt sienna yellow and white. And again, as you go through your process, you might say, mm, I really love, you know, how that cobalt blue is reflecting so you might want more of that you might want to introduce some of the um some of the magenta in it i feel as though this is reflecting pretty good now and then i just need um, i'm going to pick up just a little bit of black to make sure that this blends in the way that i want and then i need the um the the hold the bar. <laughs> I'm like, what is that thing called? The bar that's going to hold this up. So I'm just going to uh, wash my brush. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black. Um, it's going to land somewhere in through here and it's going all the way up to this top left corner in, in through here. So somewhere here, slightly diagonal. Let's see if I can get this the way that I want. Mm, I might go a little bit more to the right here, maybe over here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to just draw a diagonal line, maybe. I need to brace my hand, keep my eye on the prize, which is the other marker. There we go. And then it's thinner at the top and th thicker at the bottom. So just I'm just, just making it a little thicker at the bottom, washing my brush to get rid of this mark put a little bit of water on it it was fresh enough i could just erase it with some water and then a little bit of um, cobalt blue and white to add a highlight on this side oops there's yellow on my brush hold on cobalt blue and white not cobalt blue and yellow <laughs> to add a little highlight on this side so we can see it and then on the top side maybe i do a little um, burnt sienna and yellow and white as my highlight on here. So I'm just adding these highlights so you can, um, so this bar becomes visible. I think that looks pretty good. And then I, uh, we are going to, I'm picking up some yellow, green, and white right now. <laughs> just to put a little bit in this, in this leg here. Um, we are going to be using our um, I think I'm going to use my large bristle as well as my number six round for the next step. So once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want. Make it as shiny as you want, as exciting as you want. Put little highlights on your black keys if you want to. Um, and then we're going to be using that large brush and the medium brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to finish the ground. I'm going to be using both my large bristle brush and my medium round brush. The colors I'm going to be using are um, probably <laughs> uh, definitely green, yellow, white, um, magenta, blue, and... If I if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. I'm not sure if I'm going to use any other colors. I might use a little bit of brown and black, but I'm not sure. So what I'm in essence doing is I want to finish the grass. So that would be in around the bottom of these trees. I also need a shadow on the grass underneath the um, 
the piano and its player. And then I'm, oh, I noticed that my leg of my piano didn't make it as far down as I wanted to, but that's okay. Um, then I'm going to add flowers. Very impressionistic, loosey goosey, springtime blossom, lots of color kind of flowers. So I'm going to start with my large brush in order to get these, um, the, the grassy stuff taken care of. So I, I want to start up by those um, trees. I'm going to pick up a little bit of green, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time, just a little bit of each. And I can use the tip of my brush and just kind of make sure that I've got the bottoms of those trees pretty well disguised. Um, if I want to bring up any little bits, I can bring up the little bits. Just make sure that it kind of stays nice and connected um, to the ground. And I'm doing this just so it doesn't look as if the the tree is just um, flat in the, you know, stuck levitating or just, you know, it looks like it's in the grass. So that's why I'm just purposely making sure that I take this extra step to make sure that that bottom of the tree looks believable and not funny. Um, so that looks good to me. Now I, now I need a shadow underneath my, um, underneath. So this is where I do, I didn't, I don't know why I said I wasn't sure if I was going to use black and brown, but of course I'm using them because I need a big shadow here. So I'm definitely using a tiny bit of black and brown with a little bit of water on my brush. And this is going to give me a nice dark shadow underneath. You can rub it, you can do it in grass, um, brush strokes like I am, you, you could just do it like that if you have a, already some pretty good texture, but I feel as though I could definitely benefit from a little bit more texture down here. So I'm going to um, use it per, in, a, in a purposeful <laughs> kind of way with my um, grass making brush strokes. So dabbing as well as kind of pulling up in order to give myself some nice um, texture there, my light source is over there, so my shadow is naturally going to be kind of this way to the right. I definitely need a shadow underneath her, so that's going to happen, and she's going to be casting a shadow on the ground too, so just making sure that I've got all of this information taken place or uh, projected, definitely a shadow underneath that bench and through there. That looks pretty good, maybe a little bit higher and through here. So once you've got the shadow on, if you feel as though you need to um, put more grassy stuff around it, you can certainly pick up a little bit of green, yellow, and or white to just finish out that, that piece of it. If you have any areas that feel a little bit too streaky or not exactly the way that you wanted them, now's the time to, to um, modify that or make any little last fiddling adjustments. You could even pop a little underneath, a little bit of lightness underneath the um, piano if that works. And then I'm going to start making some flowers. So I'm going to start the flower making with this big brush because I just want it fun and impressionistic and lots of colorful flowers. So I'm going to be using my magenta, my yellow, my white, my blue, green, whatever colors I want to make these flowers. I'm going to start with my magenta and white because that's, I feel, where I'm going to be using a lot of the color. The flowers are going to be smaller the farther away that they are and bigger the closer they get to the viewer. So I have magenta and white on my brush right now. So I'm going to make, I'm using the corner of my brush I'm just going to make these little polka dots up in the distance. Little tiny polka dots with the corner of my brush. And then as I move down towards the viewer, now I can start kind of mushing the brush a little bit more. So this will make those flowers look a little bit bigger. I try to not make them super consistent. So that's why I'm using this kind of um, big bigger brush to create these so that way they won't look too uniform. And as I come in through here, this is where it's going to be closer to the viewer. It, the, you could have huge ones that are way bigger than even her because they maybe we are, our POV is allowing us to see these in their biggest form. So I can be really, 
you know, larger as I come down here. And then because I'm using both colors at the same time on my brush, maybe some of these are a little bit darker. Maybe I come back now with just a little bit of the magenta on my brush and allow for it to have these darker kind of flowers along those areas. Once I have my magenta, you can even overlap some. And I'm just doing circular kind of fun um, impressionistic flowers. You can do whatever style that you want. If you want yours to be really um, representational of a specific type of flower, then go for it. I'm now picking up some Oh, I just picked up blue by accident. I don't want to pick up blue. Hold on a second, washing my brush. Um, I was going to pick up magenta, yellow, and white. So magenta, yellow, and white is going to create this beautiful peachy kind of tone. So magenta, yellow, and white all on my brush at the same time. And I can go and start that process all over again with my little, my little dots. Start to smush them a little bit more, giving these bigger dots in through here, maybe as I come down uh, in the down here, maybe I pick up more yellow and my magenta and you can see how it's really just creating this more um, peachy tone. Maybe I pick up more just yellow and it allows for those yellow um, tones to be more dominant. So again, any kind of intensity that you want. Maybe you want some purpley blue flowers. So if you want that, wash your brush, you can use your magenta and blue. So magenta and blue and or a, a touch of your white. Um, and you, if you mix it just a little bit on your palette, that's gonna give you more of a purpley look. You could even use it with a little bit of that light blue. That's gonna give you kind of like a lavender type of appearance to it. So again, these colors are, are really gonna be um, just wherever you want to steer it into. Once you've got uh, enough of the flowers in the, in the size that you want, again, you can make them s smaller, you can make them bigger, you can make them with a couple of bumps on them. Once you've got enough and it's pleasing to your eye, then you can start adding little highlights to it or even more grassy pieces. So this is where you could even pull out the, the uh, medium brush again and you can go into your green yellow and white and you could even have like little pieces of grass or stems or uh, this additional bit of detail within your um, within your flowers and that again is going to bring these um, closer to the viewer it's going to allow the viewer to feel as if there's more texture more more vibrancy more depth to it. So you can certainly add those type of details. Once I've got enough of these little grassy pieces in between my my flowers, again, just having having fun, just adding some additional texture, depth, again, green, yellow, and white is where I'm is where I'm headed with these little um, pieces of grass that are just poking their head out. They're grabbing a little bit of that sunshine. They are adding to our, you know, energy story of, of, the, of the whole exciting concert that this person is giving all of these woodland creatures. So once I've got that, then I can say, okay, well, do I want, do I want any more detail on my flowers? Sure. Why not? So wash my brush. Maybe now I pick up my, um, I'm still using my number six round. I pick up my magenta and white. Maybe I can add like these little, um, petals to these ones that are closer. So if I'm feeling like, Ooh, these, these might want some, some little extra, Maybe the magenta ones get these petals. Maybe um, I can take, well, that was a pretty one. I can take, um, let me finish this pretty one first. <laughs> I'm like, I like these ones. So I can say, all right, these magenta ones, maybe I want them to look like these little, you know, sideways daisy things. And then maybe I can, with my um, yellow ones, maybe I make those into like little, poof ball ones and I can take my yellow and white and I can put this really cool highlight on the top of them. So I can say, okay, well maybe, maybe they're just going to be these little, um, speckly ones, almost like uh, dandelion type of 
tops to them. So that's the fun part about wildflowers is you can really just have so much fun creating these imaginary kind of flowers, creating this imaginary world of liveliness in it and just making it into your own magical little flower forest. I can pick up more blue and I can say, okay, well, maybe these ones become um, like these um, like circular petals. Oops, I need more white. Or maybe my light blue. Um, I can maybe I can make these into like these circular kind of petals. So ma make them into whatever wild kind of flowers you want. That they don't have to be exactly as mine. They can take on whatever kind of shape you want. They can have little polka dots going up. They can be little daisies. They, you know, there's just so many little fun flower gestural marks that you can make to make this into a really fun wild flower kind of um, thing. So once you have enough flowers and it is bringing you as much excitement as you had hoped it would, you can even put some little white ones. Um, we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So you can, um, I, this is a very tough, tough, um, step to stop <laughs> but if you can ever stop you can um, put this brush away take out um, the small detail brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our musician our piano player i'm going to be using my number two round the colors i'm using are white, brown, burnt sienna, cobalt blue. Mm, I might need a little bit of black, brown, and yellow. <laughs> I think that's, I think I called out all the ones I need. Um, so what I'm going to be doing, I definitely want her to have this long flowy um, kind of waist scarf belt thing so it kind of adds to the dreaminess of the um of the composition so i'll be adding that on her waist and just kind of draping it over into the into the um flowery ground i'm going to add some more highlight to her dress and shadow underneath here to finish up the the flow of it make sure that there's a second coat and that it makes sense that it drape, you know, may, might drape around this corner of the um, of the bench as well. I'm gonna finish her arms. I need to put a little hand on her and finish her hair. So I think I'm gonna start by um, putting her long drapey belt in place. So that way we can kind of just build stuff off of that. I'm gonna use a little bit of brown and white to start this. I'm gonna have it as if it's kind of um, sitting right at her waist, but I guess it could be going up a little bit as well. Kind of decorative, maybe it's underneath her breast and in front, so it's got more of that um, decorative element as opposed to a purposeful element of a belt. So something like that. And then I really want it to just flow. So I've got a, I'm going to have it kind of um, tied or bunched in through here and then it's going to flow down, meet this, and then go over the bench. Gravity takes over, it's going to go onto the ground. I'm going to put a little bit of more water on my brush, so brown, white, and water so I can make sure that I have this kind of transparent flowiness to it. I feel like I want it out here a little bit further too. Might even take up the whole corner of the bench by the time I'm done. And then I really just want it to just like lay and kind of get trapped in the the grass and the, the flowiness of um, mother nature, <laughs> you know, just maybe the, maybe it is, you know, I don't know, just laying so delicately. And I'm using the ta the brown and the white to start so I can have, um, I'm going to just get it to buckle up in through here. 
there we go and it's going to wrap around there we go i want it to be long like if like it's almost like a train when she was standing up maybe it's a little bit longer than her than her dresses got a little there we go so and the the tan will help me the brown and the white combined will help me give it that extra flow i think i want it to come maybe just a little bit more down here i just lifted my head away from her a little bit and felt like i needed this to be a little bit wider in through there yeah so it's kind of like that and then it drapes down here lands on the ground and flows away okay that makes me happy for the start i'm going to use this same brown and white to put um, some shadowy sides on her arms so down inside where it's going to meet her body and then maybe down on this bottom side a little bit so that's just a little tan color the brown and white i'm gonna now pick up my cobalt blue plus a little bit of uh brown so cobalt blue and brown to give myself a little shadow underneath her hair so cobalt blue and brown shadow underneath the hair also shadow underneath my belt so cobalt blue and brown and then cobalt blue and brown to shadow underneath the um the bench so i don't want it to go too too dark where we can't see it but i definitely want it to be darker on that underside so you under so the viewer understands it's being shadowed by that bench so that looks good now i can take my um cobalt blue and white to finish a second layer on her on her dress itself so cobalt blue and white taking it in a in a way that i feel the fabric would would kind of buckle i feel like i want to um cover this corner of the bench like that and maybe the the dress kind of drapes over this corner so i can even put a little bit more white wherever you want it to bump out a little bit more or be closer to the viewer you add a little bit more lightness to it so that will show the contour of it and then i can just fade it down and then keep that blue and white in this little oh that was a little bit too much white in this little area in through here so you can see where i put this light area right in through there that's going to explain to the viewer that that area has a little bit more that it bumps out a little bit more with a little bit more form that looks good like that it's coming i want to look at it from the side i think i might even i might even lighten it up even more just to give it more of an angelic type of look like i feel like i want the bottom of the dress to have a little bit more lightness like it's um catching um being lit up because it's fabric it can take on those light hues i'm picking up a little bit of that light blue just because i don't want to pre-mix another light blue <laughs> so a little bit of that sky blue and, and, and cobalt blue just to lighten up this corner of the dress so again this is to me allowing it to almost look like the dress is being illuminated the that thin fabric down at the bottom could be illuminated by um by the light source even over here underneath this section over here that could probably be being illuminated um and then i can take my cobalt blue light blue white and just put a second coat on this area up here i feel like i also want to put a little bit on this other shadow here sh uh, shoulder here just so the viewer understands that um she's wearing kind of a sleeveless uh dress like that and if you felt that you wanted it any lighter or darker anywhere else on the on the dress you could certainly do that and then on her arms I'm just lightening up these shoulders just a little bit on her arms i just want to put an extra coat of white i might put a little blue uh wrist um decoration too but i'm just putting white 
on this exterior part of her arm and through here, cover my um, pencil mark and then a little bit of white over here and you could have her arms just make sure that they cover the piano so you don't want any weird spots that um, that like right here I've got a black line on the top side of her arm I need to get rid of that so it doesn't look like I missed that spot when I was painting the um, the keys on the keyboard so this is where the blue and white would help you to delineate the um, the sleeve from the piano so if I put a little pretty decorative thing on her wrist or even maybe some polka dots or you know some fun um, decorative elements that's going to help to separate that sleeve from the actual um, piano and that will help the viewer understand the difference between the two so that's that's a good way to to separate those two things I'm not quite sure I like the dots but we'll just we'll just do this there we go and then what I'm going to do well then I just need to make the whole arm <laughs> we're going to go low, light blue on the whole arm I guess there we go <laughs> the the white I, I didn't like the the wrist thing being so contrasting so we're just going to go light blue there we go on this shirt there, that makes me happy. So I need her to have a hand. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. This is where I'm gonna be using burnt sienna and white. So I'm gonna pre-mix a little bit of a skin color just with my burnt sienna and white. Nothing fancy. And then I just need her fingertips kind of coming out. So right from her wrist and through here, I'm just gonna pull out just a little curve. I don't need much. Just something to imply that that's her hand. That works for me. And start small and make it bigger if you need to. And then I'm going to go ahead and do her hair. Her hair is going to be lit up, or her head's going to be lit up in through here by that light source, and then a little bit darker on this right-hand side. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown, and I'm going to give myself just a little, little darkness over on this side in through here. Maybe a little bit of darkness down at the bottom. So this is just a little bit of brown. And I'm not going to have her have tons of movement to her hair. You could certainly if you wanted to. And then I'm going to pick up some um, burnt sienna yellow and white is going to be my highlight. And I'm going to put that up in through here, up on the crown of her head. And just get that to blend out a little bit. I'm picking up a little bit more burnt sienna to get that to just allow for the crown of her head to to show the effects of the light i'm probably going to put a little bit of white up there as well and then if you wanted there to be um, more of a movement in her hair you can i just put a little bit of yellow and white uh, maybe some more burnt sienna too if you put a little highlight on her hair kind of um, on the part of her back where it just kind of goes over her back, curve it a little bit, that will allow the viewer to see it go over her back. You could even pull a couple of strands of hair kind of down this right hand side and just adding that little tiny bit of contrast in the color will help, um, help tell that story. I just put some white on my brush to give myself these little shiny spots along the edge because that's where the highlight is going to the light source is going to hit it the most. So just a little tiny bit of white along those edges. Maybe a little extra in through there. And then if you felt that you needed to do anything more, you certainly could. And I need to finish this guy up in through here. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And then I'm going to put white plus water on my brush. It's going to be really light in through here maybe on this buckle part where it's coming out her at the top. And then again, similar to how I did the, um, the knee area, wherever it's gonna be bumping over something, that's where it's gonna be the brightest. So that's gonna be the edge of the, of the um, bench. The parts of the fabric that maybe buckle a little bit more or are cinched a little bit more together over on that left hand side where it's hitting the the sun the most 
coming down. I'm using directional brush strokes to explain to the viewer how this fabric is laying. There's a bump here. Maybe I put an extra bit of lightness right in through there and pull it up into that little light area. So now that part looks like it's bumped up over some of the um, of the grassy stuff. I've got a bump here, I've got a bump here, I've got a bump here. So if I've got those little bumps, those are great spots to start pulling your, your fabric and making it look like it is um, has that movement to it. The ground level is right here, so these would be more horizontal, these would be more vertical, and that's going to help, again, show how that fabric is just laying on the ground, how it is um, maybe um, forming itself into this just flowing piece of fabric and of course you can modify it as much as you want. You could even add some blue, you could add some pink to it, whatever you feel would um, benefit you to make it into something really special. I'm just getting this to kind of drape over this lighter um, that other little part and then I would just kind of fiddle with it if you if you feel you want to make it anything more than this you can certainly just use these thought processes use the um, the these strategies that I've used in order to get the fabric to do to lay on the ground like this to get it to have movement in it um, you can use these strategies to to create m more more of anything more more fabric more um, width to it more maybe I just want more more lightness over on her on her leg because I feel like this needs to be lighter so I'm gonna just kind of add a little bit more lightness in through there but still keeping the movement um, and the the dimension of it all in place I think that looks good so if you want to fiddle with yours anymore, feel free to do so. I'm going to be using this same small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. You can have a little couple pieces of hair kind of flying out over here. Uh, wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I think I'm going lower left on this one. I'm using my small number two round. I'm gonna sign this with black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you of course can sign yours however you want. You can sign yours with your first name. You can sign it with the date. You can sign it with a fun symbol. You can sign it on the back. You can hide it wherever you want. It's up to you because it's your painting and you get to make those kind of decisions all on your own. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very uh, a lively fantasy musical <laughs> figure flower landscape painting <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.